Hi everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to the second episode of Eagle Spirit Science Futures, where science doesn't just apply to the classroom. In this episode, we're going to learn about light refraction and how it's involved in spear fishing. Where I come from, a big component of our traditional foods comes from the water. You can ask anyone from my community what comes to mind when they think about traditional food, and nine times out of ten, they'll mention salmon. This is the lifeblood of my nation, and it's always a treat when we can have it. In today's age, a lot of the salmon caught in my community is done by net fishing. But, my ancestors used a different approach to fish before this. Using a torch and a specialized spear, they would head out into the waters by canoe during the night. From here, they would use the torch to lure salmon towards the surface, using the spear to fish them from the water. Now this might sound like a very straightforward process, but there's a lot of skill that's required to accomplish this. Let's talk about why that is. I want you to try this at home. Take a clear glass you have and fill it with water. Now either with something like a pencil or at least something slender, dip it into the water. From what you can see from looking at the side, it looks as if the object is bending once it enters the water. Light refraction, in the simplest terms, is basically the bending of light as it travels from one transparent substance into another. Now a transparent substance is one that lets light pass through it without scattering. Objects can clearly be seen through these transparent substances, and some examples of this include glass, water, and even the air around you. Let's apply this to our spear fishing example. Let's say that there's a fish in the water and the sun is casting rays of light down onto the earth. These rays are going to travel all the way from the sun, through the air, and finally to the water where it'll make contact with the fish. Now the fish isn't a transparent substance, so it's going to absorb a lot of these light rays, but a few of them are actually going to bounce off and scatter off of the fish. It's these light rays that are what we see with our eyes and tell us that there's a fish in the water. As the light comes from the fish towards our eyes, the angle that it is traveling will change once it exits the water and enters the air. This is because water and air have different densities and light will travel differently between the two. This bending of light tricks our brains into seeing the fish at a place that it is not. If this is hard to visualize, we'll be exploring this bending of light in the upcoming experiment. Here's what you'll need in today's experiment. You'll need a large plastic bowl or Tupperware, some straws, some small wooden skewers, some blue tack, or something like Play-Doh if you have it, a pair of scissors, something to measure with, either a nice clear ruler or a measuring tape. All right, with those materials, we're gonna go ahead and set up for the two experiments we got today. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a straw and you're gonna cut off a small portion of it, maybe about an inch or two. From there, you're gonna take some blue tack or Play-Doh and you're gonna make a small fish. Go ahead and be creative here. Think about what kind of fish you have uh, flowing inside of waters near your community. Try to emulate that. Salmon's pretty prominent where I'm from, so I'm gonna try to replicate a salmon with my fish. We went ahead and measured our fish to be about two centimeters in length. Try to keep it around that size. Remember, the larger the fish you make, the easier the challenge is gonna be. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that piece of straw that we cut we're gonna add that extra bit of blue tack that we left, and we're going to attach that to the side of the bowl. We want the straw to be facing into it because we're gonna be filling it up with water in just a second. Next, we're gonna take that blue tack fish that we made, and we're gonna put that onto the bottom, right in the middle. The only step that's left here is we gotta fill up our, either our bowl or Tupperware with water. In this first experiment, we're going to explore how light refraction can affect how we see objects in the water and measure the difference between where we see an object and where it actually is. The first thing you're going to want to do is measure the distance between the fish 
and the surface of the water with your ruler. Mark this down. It's going to be important for the rest of the experiment. The next part of the experiment, you're going to be trying to aim the straw that you've attached to the outside of your container towards the fish. Try to use your eye. Aim the straw right where you think the spear should be able to pierce into the fish that you've made. If you've done everything right, you shouldn't be noticing that the spear is passing right over the fish and you're not contacting it at all. This is what's called the apparent angle and where your eye thinks the fish actually is. We want to measure this. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler, holding the skewer right above where it should be hitting the fish, and you're going to measure the distance from the point of your spear to the top. In our experiment, we measured the actual depth of the fish in the container to be 6.3 centimeters and the apparent depth of the fish that we were seeing with our eye to be about 4.1 centimeters. If we were to transfer this into a diagram like we made earlier, basically that X that I made earlier is the apparent depth, which is 4.1, but the fish was actually at 6.3 centimeters. For our next experiment, we're actually going to be trying to hit the fish this time around. Understanding that light refraction means that we can't use our eye like we want to. What you're going to do is you're going to take your straw that you're going to be putting the skewer through and you want to aim it a little bit lower than you did earlier so that it's actually facing below the fish. From here, you're going to put your skewer through and without adjusting the angle, you're going to see if you're able to hit the fish. If you miss, don't worry, you're going to have multiple attempts, but you want to measure where the spear tip is in the apparent depth. This is going to be important for measuring accuracy. Adjust your angle for your next shots if you weren't able to hit it on the first mark and if all goes well, you should be able to hit the fish in one of your next two goes. In our first attempt, we basically got to a depth of 5.8 centimeters when the actual depth was still 6.3 centimeters. To calculate percent error, you're going to want to take the actual depth, for us it was 6.3, subtract our attempt, which was 5.8, Divide that by the actual depth again, which is 6.3, and multiply that by 100. Calculating that, we see that I had a percent error of 7.93%. What that means is that my attempt was 7.93% away from actually hitting the mark. We repeated this two more times, and I was actually able to hit it on the third attempt. So here I'm just writing down in this table three things. My spear attempts, the actual location, and the percent error just like I calculated in the last one. For my second attempt, I was only able to get it to about 6.0 centimeters, but as you can see in my last attempt, I was actually able to hit the fish. If we were to take all of the percent errors I had for those three trials, add them together, and divide by the number of trials, which was three, it would show that on average, I was off the mark by 4.23%. Now, if we want to calculate the accuracy, it's as easy as just taking 100% and subtracting my percent error, which was 4.23. What this translates to is that I was about 95.77% on the mark. Now that the experiment is done, take a look at your results. How accurate were you? Did you hit the fish on the mark? Were you off? Feel free to try it again if you feel like as if you can do better. And if you're curious about how well your parents or your siblings could do, ask them to try the experiment out. Take the results with them. Maybe try to explain a little bit of what you've learned here as well. Spear fishing is just one example of the many ways that our ancestors interacted with the world around them. Regardless of whether the food they ate came from the land or the waters, there was a respect and honor paid to the animals for their sacrifice. Today, many indigenous peoples hunt and forage for the very same foods that their ancestors once ate. The ways that we seek out these foods may have changed due to now modern technology and innovations, but what remains true are the teachings and intentions that were passed down to us by our ancestors. Indigenous foods are very much a part of our culture as language, songs, and stories. And for those of us who are away from our communities and loved ones, eating our traditional foods makes us feel that much closer to home. Thank you for tuning in to Eagle Spirit Science Futures. We hope you enjoyed the learning in this episode. And until next time, happy learning.